Next up, we have Chris Canoy, the Managing Director of Challenger Exploration with fantastic projects in Argentina and Ecuador. Chris, welcome to the Virtual Gold Conference. Take it away. Uh, thanks for having me, Kerry. And it's a pity we can't be face to face, but hopefully yeah. in June we can get there. Oh, I hope so, mate. And what I'll do is I'll do a quick sort of overview of Challenger, then I'll really move to new developments, which is some exploration drilling in Argentina and then, you know, the drilling in Ecuador and what that looks like. So quick overview of Challenger, two projects in South America. Lead project is our oil alarm project in Argentina. Started life as a high grade historical resource. Yeah, we've now got an underlying, you know, intrusion hosted discovery of you know, significant scale, nine rigs on site drilling out towards our first resource. And you can see some of the results there really, you know, their recent results, they're pretty typical of the project. Chris, when is that you said coming out to an initial resource, when are you expecting to have that? Um, what we're going to do is put out a resource when we're sort of 50% through our drill program. At the moment, we've put out assay results for about 78,000 metres of 204,000 metres. So, yeah, it, depending on the labs, hopefully we get there this quarter. Maybe it's early next quarter. <clears throat> you know, I think a 50%, 55% you know, run rate, it gives the market a feel for what will be there when we finish the program. Uh, so 200 square kilometres of tenure. You know, there's about 20 kilometres of what we call the greater wall alarm trend and everything I talk about here is from sort of two and a half kilometres. Good met, cash balance, $27.6 million, so funded for the foreseeable future and you know, 11 rigs going, two in Ecuador and nine in Argentina. <clears throat> And this is our wall alarm project, just an aerial view south is actually to the top of the page. You can see there the whole trend continues another three or four kilometres at least to the south. You get exactly the same continuation of the trend north as well. You can see there the Magnata and Sanchez fault. They're these two sort of key feeder structures. They're vertical faults. They go for 10, 15 kilometres either way. The fluids come up those faults, you've dropped out this sort of high grade massive sulfide mineralization, fairly consistent along the faults, five to 10 meters wide, going five to six grams gold. Then you've got a series of limestone beds dipping at about 45 degrees to the right. And where that fluid coming up the faults has intersected the limestone units, it's dissolved them, replaced them with sulfides. In South America, they call them mantos. That's just a, a South American word for sulfide bodies within bedding planes. And then in the yellow here between the two faults, there's a big intrusion system that's come up there. We think it's probably the source of the fluids, but that's mineralized at well going about a gram. It's at least one and a half kilometers long, almost hundred meters wide, open at depth. And we now look like we're getting the extension of that down here to the south. And then we've how, also- How deep are you drilling, Chris? Uh, deepest holes a thousand meters ended in mineralization. Most of the holes are sort of four to 600 metres. You know, there's not a lot of point putting out a first resource that's, you know, got a lot of, you know, material that's deeper than an open pit will be. <laughs> but look, still open in all directions, open at depth, north, south, east and west. And, you know, this is just on the right. You've got a plan view showing you Stanchez fault at the top, this Magnata fault, the you know, two main feeder structures in the middle. The takeaways from this are basically the best hole, 63 metres at almost 10, right down at the southern end of our drilling. You go another sort of 600 metres south, some channel sampling we've done in one of the old adits, 13 metres at 15 and a half grams. We've done no drilling down here. Mineralisation <coughs> mapped in outcrop as well up into the hills and mineralisation another 400 metres north. So all of this drilling is really in sort of two, two and a half kilometres. And we've now got a three and a half kilometre trend. So, you know, we've really only scratched the surface here. And then is on the left, it shows you what the mineral is. Sorry to interrupt you. Is there anyone drilling around you or are you pretty much the only people in this area? No, um, Glencore has drilled a couple of holes on the concession about five to oh, probably 10 k's away. But really, Walilan is, you know, it's been known for a long time, but it's really was seen as small and lacking scale. So, you know, we're the only one really drilling in the region. And that's, we've got a, a window here where we can wrap up a big regional play, which is what we're moving to do. Okay. So, you know, the aim here is we want to control the whole belt because, you know, if there's one of these, <clears throat> yeah, there's normally two, three or four of these things. And you can see that looking at the mag. <clears throat> and just shows you the starting point on the top there. That's a half a million ounces of high grade. Where we are basically as of September, which is a third of the way through, gold is the high grade, <clears throat> purple is the intrusion hosted material, still very limited by drilling. 
as I said, where we are now is we've drilled 140,000 metres, got assays back for about 80,000 metres. The intention is that you know, mineralisation is still open in all directions. We'll put out a resource at about the halfway mark. But in terms of, you know, deepest hole in the scarn, it's actually not 27 metres at seven now. We've got a 44 gram hole recently that pushed another 200 metres deeper. And then, you know, better grades as we go deeper in the intrusion host material. The, the key takeaway is this first resource when it comes, very much a starting point, <coughs> not an ending point. And, you know, this is a rare deposit. It's got scale and it's got grade. So recent developments. Yeah, we started a series of exploration focused holes, basically <clears throat> testing a few new concepts, aimed to push the mineralization you know, half a kilometer away. You know, some of the results there on the left, that 97.8, that's you know, a, a second zone. We think it's the extension of this Verde intrusion hosted material, another four or 500 meters south of the Magnata Fault. We're infilling around that now. Hole 394, you can see it's at the top. On the right, I'm showing you the magnetic data. So hole 394 up here, five metres at nine. You know, when you look at the mag, there's, there's an east-west structure there. So we're now thinking maybe that hole's got a third east-west feeder fault. And, you know, the Magnata fault and Sanchez fault, both look they're going to have, you know, four or 500,000 you know, ounces of high-grade mineralisation on them. So quite significant. And then hole 326 here. You know, the Wallilan mineralisation, there's a north-south magnetic high that you can sort of see on the right. The main you know, bodies of the mineralization are just off the flanks on the sort of you know, the demagnetized zone. Hole 326, you can see a second, you know, north-south magnetic trend, virtually identical to the Wallilan one, two meters at seven and a half. Now that's similar to some of the results we were getting you know, early on when we started drilling the mag highs before we worked out where the mineralization was. So this opens up a whole new play. We've probably got to go and drill another two to three hundred meters to the left over here and to the right. But you, know, you get a, a second sort of trend here that's mineralized and you can start to rack up a lot of ounces you know, very quickly. <clears throat> and then this is a, a offensive holes we drilled on the Sanchez fault, which is the main sort of east-west feeder structure of the north where you know, this is right up in the hills. These are the first holes we've got back with the portable rig. You know, it's 200 meters away from all other drilling, you know, almost 70 meters at two and a half, including 5.4 meters at almost 30. So that's pushed the mineralization another 200 meters you know, beyond our previous drilling. And it's still mapped as another couple of hundred meters in the fault. And then you know, hole 308 here, I'm showing you a section on the uh, left. We basically extended that hole because it ended in half a gram mineralization of 300 meters. Drilled through the Verde zone, you know, showing this mineralization down to 700 meters. We were planning on drilling a deeper hole just to get a look at what's deep. Uh, basically at 1,009 metres, just as we ran out of drill rods, we yeah. got into something interesting. The bottom four metres of the hole went almost six. The bottom three metres went almost eight. Uh, it's a different formation. we have never drilled through it before. Don't quite know what it means yet. If nothing else, it shows that you've got over a kilometre of mineralisation and still open at depth. We'll sort of get round to looking at that a little later. And apologies, I've got a helicopter flying past out the window. <coughs> Hopefully it almost disappears. And then on the right, just um, some of the, the drilling we put out in January on the Magnata Fault. So the key takeaways there are we pushed it another 240 metres deeper. Best result there, 44 grams gold. We've extended it almost 150 metres to the west along strike. Yeah, you know, hole 442 here, 29 metres at five. That was under a couple of holes that didn't get much. So what it's showing is if you get a couple of holes that don't get a lot, you're actually not out of the mineralization. So we're gonna to have to drill some you know, much deeper holes here on the Magnata Fault. And then some big widths of lower grade material near surface, which is open pitable as well. <coughs> um, quick update in Ecuador. <coughs> so what I'm showing you here is the gold in soil map. Now we put out our first couple of drill holes about three weeks ago. Hole one, which is in the middle of page, not optimally sited. You never drill your best hole first, and that was the um, drill pad nearest to uh, the road. So that, you know, basically 784 metres at, you know, 0.4 gold, ended in mineralisation, entire hole was mineralised from surface. You know, a nice higher grade zone in there, almost 400 metres at half a gram, 200 metres to 0.6. <clears throat> Where we are in the program now is, you know, we've picked up the drilling rate, two rigs are performing well. We're actually drilling holes 13 and 14 now. 
Uh, we've drilled holes three, four, five, and six. We're sort of testing the better part of this trend. Hope to have those holes out. We're just waiting on assay results for hole five and six. Should have those, you know, if not by the end of this week, hopefully next week. And you know, what does that look like? I'm showing you hole six here. <clears throat> yeah, log is intersecting 200 meters of intrusive breccia. Yeah, the whole 200 meters, you know, had sulfide mineralization in there. You know, half a percent to three percent chalcopyrite. You can see there, it's some nice looking core. With for gold, those that you don't, don't know understand, what... Chris, for those that are new to this, explain what that means to have the okay, chalcopyrite. So what it means is it's mineralized. They're really sexy looking rocks. <laughs> because it's gold, you don't know what it's going to assay till you actually get the assays. This could go a half a gram, it could go a gram, it could go nothing, but it's certainly what we hoped we'd see. And there's a decent width of it. You know, watch this space. We should get this assay back, you know, as I said, late this week, early next week, and we'll get you know, the, the next four holes out and that'll give us a feel. And then, you know, what we then did is hole six, we'd actually moved it because we thought from looking at holes three and four, the mineralization might be steeper. Hole eight, we went back and drilled where hole six was going to be. We're now going to follow up you know, with a couple of you know, deeper holes, given what it looks like visually. Hole eight, you know, log is intercepting you know, almost 150 metres of the same breccia. Sulfides look like you've got about double the sulfide content. So hopefully that means you're going to have double the mineralization. And you know, a couple of the photos here, you know, this is 213 meters down hole. You can see this is you know, really sexy looking rock. It's got blobs of massive sulfide in there. The goldy stuff is chalcopyrite, the darker stuff is pyrotite. <clears throat> Another sort of 30 meters down the hole again, you see the same stuff. And then you know, 250 meters down hole, you see similar. So there's 50 meters of, you know, semi-massive sulfides there in blobs. Again, with gold, you never know, but this is really sexy looking stuff as well. And if hole six assays okay, then you know, the expectation is that hole eight's gonna have double the grade. So you know, very much watch this space, but internally we're excited, but you gotta temper that with, you don't know until you get the assay results back. <clears throat> but, this yeah. space, the assays are pending, ladies and gentlemen. Mark, it'll you know, give us a week and, and we hope to have assay results for three, four, five and six out. And you know, just to show what it looks like, we're redoing all the geophysics now, but the dotted red are holes six and eight. So we, you know, we still haven't drilled the better looking parts of this IP anomaly, which picks up sulfides either. So you know, it, it does look like it's open at depth. So again, yeah, depending on results, very much a starting point, not an ending point, but there's a lot of exploration potential in Ecuador there. And you know, this is the second part we'll sort of start drilling in Colorado V where we actually think we've got some better looking anomalies. There's about this five big, you know, kilometre long gold and copper in soil anomalies. You know, sitting to the top of page here is a deposit called Kang Regios, which is 17 million ounces of gold and getting bigger, going through DFS. And, you know, these targets we're drilling are pretty similar, you know, big sort of low grade intrusive breccia slash porphyry targets. So, you know, there's certainly, you know, some expectation in the company on Ecuador. We've just got our fingers crossed for the <clears throat> quickly wrap up. So what do you get with us? Ongoing news flow that comes from 11 rigs, nine in Argentina, two in Ecuador. We're now getting comfortable while Ilana's big. We're going to put out a resource just over the halfway mark to show that to the market. So give us later this quarter, early next quarter, depending on the labs. And in Ecuador, you've seen the first two holes. You know, you, probably the next month will tell what that um, whole program is going to look like as we get these assays back for the next seven or eight holes. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if we increase the program by 50%. We're talking about it, but until we get the assay results, we don't know. So you look, a lot of good news to come and potentially some, you know, company making news in Ecuador if we get some luck with the assays. Thanks, Kerry. And back over to you. Bruce, is that, is, has Ecuador surprised you to the upside? You've got two rigs there at the moment. Are you going to increase the number of rigs up there? Because that's a discovery that could can potentially get a lot bigger. Uh, look, it could. Um, it, it looks great. The core looks really exciting. Let's get the assay results back in and then we know. Um, you know, we'll probably do 30,000 metres with two rigs and then look to get some more rigs up there contingent upon the results. But yeah, look, we're really excited internally, but I've also seen good looking core holes, not assay, and you look like an absolute idiot too. That is true. Chris, we've got 10 seconds, three reasons why people should sit up and take notice of you guys right now, ASX code CEL. 
while Elan's big, going to get bigger, give us a month or two and the market will understand that with the first resource. And hopefully we're onto something really significant in Ecuador and we'll know that in one to two weeks. Chris Canal, uh, Managing Director of Challenger Exploration. Big things ahead, ladies and gentlemen, both grade and scale in Ecuador and in uh, Argentina. Thanks for joining us at the virtual gold conference, Chris. Thanks, Gary.